Hi, I am Danny Madden, and I'm Concertmaster of the New England Philharmonic Orchestra. In this video performance, we are pleased to present chamber music of three young composers who are featured on the NEP's current season 21 to 22. Uh, these are full orchestra programs where you can hear the music of these three young composers. But our idea here today is to see if we could get to know them through a variety of their musical compositions, not only for the big forces of an orchestra, but also through their chamber music for small forces. Last summer, the NEP String Quartet focused on learning chamber works by these three composers, and they are Eric Nathan, our composer in residence, uh, as well as our Call for Scores winners, composers Sofia Roja and TJ Cole. We first met these composers during the COVID lockdown on our virtual interview series called Listening In, where we did deep dives into their orchestral music and got to know them as composers and as individuals. This season, you will hear their full orchestra pieces at our live concerts. In this virtual program, you will hear their chamber music, uh, the pieces we explored this past summer. Um, we always marvel at the NEP how inspiration takes many forms and sometimes um, influences on artists can leap across centuries. It is always fascinating to learn about a composer's influences and creative sparks. The first piece you will hear is T.J. Cole's Scherzo for String Quartet. The title is Ach wie flustig, ach wie nichtig. Please excuse my German pronunciation. The translation of the title means, ah, how empty, ah, how fleeting. Uh, T.J. wrote it during a period when she was listening a great deal to Bach's cantata number 26 by the same name. Uh, it's named for the chorale tune from 1661 that Bach was inspired by and included it in his 1794 cantata. Look at the lineage of inspiration here from a chorale tune from 1661 to a Bach cantata 1794 to a piece by T.J. Cole in 2014. It's just remarkable. You will clearly hear the influence of the Bach in TJ's lively, colorful, and humorous piece. Next on our program is Sofia Roja's Standing Waves, written in 2019. This is a two-movement string quartet that is both a depiction and a surprisingly moving characterization of the audio phenomena known as standing waves. In this piece, you will hear musical phrases uh, circling and echoing each other as if caught up in a time loop. Uh, Sofia also quotes a popular Mexican song from 1853, La Sandunga. And the tune is stated in each instrument, but not in a way that we're accustomed to. Rather than sequentially stating the tune in different instruments, uh, Sofia layers the tune over itself densely in overlapping uh, textures. It's fascinating to hear. Finally, we perform Eric Nathan's piece, Omaggio a Gesualdo, which is a direct and beautifully evocative homage to the 16th century Italian composer Carlo Gesualdo and to his very powerful madrigal from 1594, Ahi, Disparate Vita, which is translated, Ah, Desperate Life. Uh, first, we will play a string quartet arrangement of this madrigal that Eric transcribed for string quartet so that you can hear the original source of the inspiration. Then we will go to Eric's uh, 2013 piece in tribute to Gesualdo, the Omaggio a Gesualdo. And in it, Eric amazingly traverses the form and line of Gesualdo's score and text, but now in Eric's own musical and gestural vernacular. He movingly quotes the madrigal's concluding phrase at the end of his piece. We are really excited that Eric, Sophia, and TJ um, 
recorded video introductions to each of their pieces so that you can hear them talk about these pieces directly. Uh, we really hope that you will enjoy and be moved by these wonderful pieces of music. And now to just say that we at the NEP hope that we might meet you and hear your reactions at some of our live concerts. We're playing a full season of live concerts uh, and at various venues. And you can find out about our concerts and our dates and times uh, at our website for program information. We hope to see you there. Thank you for listening. Hi, uh, my name is TJ Cole. I composed the piece Scherzo, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce the German name. Um, yeah, so basically this piece was a, a student project that I had to do while I was in my undergrad. Um, and I remember being really obsessed with this Bach cantata, which is where the title of my piece comes from. And I was also having to study Beethoven string quartets, which is why it turned into a string quartet. And I was also, I think I was traveling home to see my family for holidays and they have an old car that doesn't have an mp3 hookup so when I drive their car around I would just listen to whatever CDs they had and I remember listening to Black Dog by Led Zeppelin a lot for whatever reason. Um, so when I was writing Scherzo I had a really short amount of time to write this piece, I'm not gonna lie about that. So I just kind of threw together like whatever influences were like immediately um, you know, influencing me at the time. So it ended up being a culmination of this Bach cantata, Beethoven's string quartets, and Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Um, I do remember having access to a violin while I was writing it, but I don't play violin. Um, and I remember thinking like, what would it be like if you could play like guitar power chords on a violin and it turned into the like, bum, 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 stuff that you'll hear in the middle of the piece. So that's how Scherzo came to be. Thanks. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Sofia Rocha. I'm the composer of the next piece on the concert, which is Standing Waves for String Quartet. I wrote this in 2019 for the Graduate Fellowship String Quartet at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where I was a student at the time, and as their composer in residence. A large source of inspiration for the piece was actually their playing. Um, I attended a concert and I was really struck by the lyricism of their playing and wanted to write a piece in which every single player got moments to kind of like come out of the texture and really shine individually. Um, and also times where kind of everyone would be able to solo at the same time independently of each other and kind of like really having this idea of four independent soloists in mind in a lot of points of the piece. Um, contrasting to that, I also had this idea of standing waves, um, which are waves where the particles themselves that make up, that constitute the wave, are um, remain in the same place horizontally and instead just move vertically to create a wave that moves across them while they stay in place. Um, and I think there's a kind of longing in that, in that like, you're in one place and you see this wave going by and you're part of it, but you're not actually going with it. Um, additionally, I had inspiration and used um, this Mexican folk song, La Santunga, from Oaxaca, which is um, the song mourning the, um, a mother who has died. Um, and I felt it fit the character of the piece very well. It's this kind of very slow, lyrical, somber song that I think fits well and then also has kind of, can be more lively as well as this waltz. Um, and I think the morning of it fits well with the idea of the longing in the standing wave in that it kind of provides something for the longing to attach to, that you're longing for someone who you're mourning. Um, and then in the second movement, there's more of an exploration of tone and style. So it's a kind of a bit more contemporary in nature. Um, there's certainly more dissonance. There's moments where all the members of the ensemble are playing completely independently of each other and they're not playing in time together at all. Um, there's times when the instruments are making sounds that one might describe as noise um, and kind of really having the contrast be there while still remaining this, while still retaining this core of uh, lyricism in both movements and uh, a sense of neo-romanticism as well. Um, unfortunately, the Graduate Fellowship String Rotet never actually uh, got a chance to play the piece due to COVID. However, I've been very fortunate to have it played twice already this year previously, and I'm very excited for you all to hear the third performance of this Standing Waves for String Quartet.
Hi, my name is Eric Nathan, and I'm the composer of Omaggio Gesualdo for String Quartet. Um, the Italian composer Carlo Gesualdo, who lived and worked in the 16th century, um, has uh, been a composer whose music I've loved for quite a while. Um, I find it still quite modern um, in his use of harmony, where he juxtaposes chords that perhaps distantly related or unexpected to be next to each other. And in my own music, I, I feel there's a similar, I have a similar affinity for this practice where I like to superimpose chords that um, their uh, conjunction are also unexpected and um, surprising. Um, this piece was uh, originally commissioned in a string quintet version by the Chelsea Music Festival for a concert celebrating the 400th anniversary of Gesualdo's death um, in 2013. And my piece was uh, paired with madrigals, uh, vocal madrigals, um, sung by a vocal ensemble by uh, um, Gesualdo. And uh, in preparation for composing this work, I listened to many, many uh, Gesualdo madrigals and my attention was really captured by this particular one, Ai Disperata Vita, uh, which translates to Ah, Desperate Life. Um, what, what caught my ear was it has such vibrancy and such a, a beautiful sense of life in this work um, that's in a sense about death. Um, in my omaggio, I recast and reimagine motives, melodies, and gestures and textures that Gesualdo uses, and I loosely um, follow the, the structure of the text and the form that Gesualdo used. In a kind of sense, almost superimposing my piece on top of his. Um, the text that he set, the, uh, here's the English translation of it, Ah, desperate life, which, whilst fleeing from my loved one, falls miserably into a thousand torments. O oh, turn to your sweet and gracious light, which wants to give you comfort. And Gesualdo is known for painting with the text, musically um, bringing elements of the, the, the word imagery alive in the gestures of the music, and I try to do the same in my piece. Um, the last line here, turn to your sweet and gracious light, which wants to give you comfort, had special resonance for me when I was composing the work as my aunt, Tira Younger, unexpectedly passed away. And I was dealing with that um, grief at the time and found solace in this last line. And so in the piece at, at the end, you'll hear the first violin who is trilling on this, uh, on their string to create these very luminous, um, delicate harmonics um, which is kind of like this light that is shimmering in the background and on top of which we hear finally an actual quote from Gesualdo's madrigal, but it's slowed down and, uh, and almost removed as if it's coming from another world. So I want to thank um, the New England Philharmonic String Quartet with uh, uh, concertmaster Daniel Madden for performing Omaggio Gesualdo as well as my uh, orchestration of uh, the original Magical by Jess Waldo. Thank you.
Hi, it's Danny again. Thank you so much for attending our virtual performance. We hope that you enjoyed this music as much as we enjoyed learning it and preparing it for you. Um, and we would like to also thank the three composers who wrote these pieces, Eric Nathan, our composer in residence, and the Call for Scores winning composers, Sophia Roca and TJ Cole, all of you whose uh, orchestral music will be programmed this season. So check us out on our NEP Philharmonic website, you'll see the link at the bottom of the screen. And please do come to a concert. We would love to meet you and to talk about this music or any other music on our season. Uh, we do hope that you and your families will be well and safe and hope to meet you sometime at one of our concerts. Thank you.